Hello everyone. Today's pop-up webinar is covering unit pricing, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I am Derek DeLaQuadri, president of Vision InfoSoft, and I'm here with Brian Hoffelder, our training and product developer. And today we're going to do just kind of a quick little overview on unit pricing and where is uh, usually a good place to be using it and kind of how to create your unit pricing. Uh, and also the good and bad and the ugly, I guess, is what we're covering today. So, Brian, I'll let you take over now. Thank you, Derek. And <clears throat> again, good morning or good afternoon to everyone. So let's just talk real quickly about what a, what we mean by a unit price. A unit price is a basically a flat rate price for installing any kind of electrical item. It could be a receptacle, it could be a switch, it could be a light fixture. And it typically is a comprehensive price for material, labor, everything all included, just like when you buy something at the hardware store, or the grocery store, et cetera. Um, there also is an option to break out the material, the total material and total labor in a unit price. So if you have to provide that separated, we can do that as well. But we'll, we'll show you that when we get into the, the nitty gritty here. The, the reason we call this the good and the bad and the ugly is that, you know, in an ideal world, you really don't want to do unit pricing per se because it restricts your flexibility because you have to basically give a, a customer a price for a receptacle that may uh, not cover the proper cost in certain scenarios, or it may be too high because you're, you're building in more markup than you need to if you were putting in 100 receptacles. So those kind of things are, are limitations of unit pricing. Uh, but the good part is they're fast and easy to use, and so that's why we call this the the good, the bad, and the ugly in uh, reference to the old uh, Clint Eastwood movie. So, so why do electrical contractors need unit pricing? Basically, sometimes because the customer requires it. It could be part of a contract that you're negotiating, and they may want you to do, give them pre-stated unit prices for uh, adding certain things. It could be that they want the bid in that format. They want to know by unit what you're what you're charging them. Uh, again, the benefit of unit pricing is it's fast. You know, as fast as you can plug in 10 receptacles and 10 switches, you've got a price. And like I said, the drawback is that we're trying to generalize sometimes too much. I'll show you in the, we get into the program a little bit of a way to, to compensate for that. And that will allow you to be more profitable in situations where you know that you need to have a, a, a bigger allowance for the amount of conduit wire or that kind of a thing, or how to vary the markup depending on the situation. So let's get into actually showing you how to use it. It's a very simple thing to do. I'm going to flip over to the EBM screen, and I'm going to start a new job. So we'll just click on new, and we'll call it unit price example, and we'll just hit OK here. So a lot of you may not even know this. I'd be surprised, actually, to find out otherwise. There's a whole part of the assembly database just devoted to unit pricing. Now, I've created a little shortcut here under takeoff. I've got a shortcut that brings me right to the unit price part of the database, or the assembly part of the database. But just to back up one level here, you can see it's part of the regular assemblies. So that little shortcut just point, points right to that category. And you'll see we've got them for commercial and residential. And then we've got them broken up into a combined total, which is the one we're going to use here. Again, it gives me a total price of material labor for uh, each of these assemblies we're going to take off here. And we'll just do a real simple takeoff here. I'm going to put in some devices. We'll do them with, we'll do them with the MT. And you'll see switches up at the top. Let's put in five switches. Now, this is an assembly, so it has all of the materials, the box, the plate, the receptacle. I'll show you what's in the assembly in just a minute. And then we'll do five receptacles. And then we're also going to throw in a home run. If I go back here, there's a category for commercial branch home runs. We'll do an 80-foot home run here, and we'll put in just one of those. I'm going to come back and show you what's in the assemblies. I just want to show you how the, the process uh, gets uh, finished up. You go down to reports like you normally do. You hit job extension. Now, with the unit price scenario, this is where you would put your markup. You'd put it under the target price. 
on the material column and you'd put it under the labor column. So if you mark, normally mark up 10 and 10 for overhead and profit, you'd put 21% in here. If you're also marking up your overhead, uh, marking up your overhead on with your profit. Uh, with unit pricing, I definitely would consider a, a larger markup because again, you're trying to generalize for uh, situations that where you have to be a little more conservative. So by putting a 40% price factor on material and labor, I'm going to save it so it's, if I come back and run the report again, it'll have that automatically saved, and you just hit extension spreadsheet. So the other thing I want to do, and once I do this, it'll stay in this mode, I want to get rid of the labor column because it's all built into the price. So you just right click, come down here to show hide columns, get rid of labor, get rid of the labor unit, and get rid of the extended labor. Very nice simple report. Quantity, price, extended price. And again, these prices have the markup built in at 40%. To turn this into a little more of a polished report, you can come down to preview report. And there it is. Nice simple format. Prices and totals. So I don't think it gets much simpler. Uh, let me back up a step here, and I'll just show you how to know what's in an assembly. I'm also going to show you how to build a new assembly on the fly. So we're going to come back here to the drop-down menu for takeoff, come down here to unit prices, and let's take a look at a switch assembly That's or a receptacle, either one. So if I right-click on this assembly here and hit Edit, for the EBM users, you're probably familiar with what an assembly looks like. It's got all the components. It's got the quantities. It's got all the materials that go into it. Now, if I want to change this assembly, I can do one of two things. I can make it change just for the job by changing the quantities here, or I can copy the assembly and make a new one. Let's do that. I'm going to hit Copy here and just hit OK. Over on the right, you hit Add. You hit OK, and then you hit Recall. So I'm going to change this to 30 feet. So I need to double the amount of conduit, double the amount of couplings, double the amount of straps, and we'll double the amount of wire, and that should just about do it. Now, here's the whole secret to the, to the unit pricing assemblies. When you hit this little tab that says Item Info, Right now, it's just a regular assembly. That little bullet tells you that. By changing it to sum, now it just gives you the total cost of material and labor. Now, this price doesn't include the markup. You put that in when you run the reports. And we're done. That's now going to be a new assembly. If I take it off and put it into the bid, there it is down there at the bottom. Again, to run the reports, you go to Job Extension. I told it to save the markup on the price at 40%, labor at the same number. So we just go to Extension Spreadsheet. Okay. That's basically how easy it is. You could turn any assembly in the database into a unit price assembly. Let me just take you back there one more time. You take any assembly, and you, when you go to edit, actually, let's go to an assembly that's not a unit price. Let me back up a step here. We'll just go to a regular device assembly under the assemblies up here at the top. This is the ones you use the most. We'll go to switches. Let's go to a common assemblies because these have wire built in. So you edit. And you come to this little tab that says Item Info, and you change it to Sum. And that's it. If you want the, the pricing of material separated, then you uncheck that little box, and then it gives you total material and total labor separately. Again, I think most people probably want the sum of both. I'll cancel out of here. Yeah, did you, I don't know how long it would take uh, to show how to make that shortcut that you created. Yeah, let me show you how to make the shortcut. Um, under settings, there's this option for 
default settings for takeoff. And that would be this option for takeoff menus. So if you don't have one on the second line, you can add it, which you probably don't. But if you want to make up a new one, I'll just do it again. I'll type in unit prices. And you come over here to the right and hit root. Go to the assemblies. Come all the way down to unit prices. And then you just hit use menu. Actually, I went one step too far. Let's take that back. Assemblies, unit prices, use menu. There we go. So now when I go to that drop-down menu for takeoff, that'll go straight to that category. You can use that feature for any folders, categories, maybe that you've added to the database. Just the way to create a nice little shortcut to it. I think that's going to about wrap it up. We're going to make some recordings of this. You'll be able to access those on our website. And on YouTube. We're loading all of our videos on YouTube. And you can follow us, or what's it called on, on YouTube? I think it's follow. And hit the little bell to get alerts when we're, whenever we add a new video. Um, it'll send you an email. So we, we uh, suggest that. We're also on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter. If you're on any of those, you can follow us there and you'll get the same type of alerts from us whenever we have updates on these videos or anything else about our company, our products, or maybe events we're going to, training that we're, uh, classroom training that Brian hosts across the U.S. So I think we'll wrap up yeah. in here. Yeah, so thank you. We'll uh, see you next month, hopefully. We'll have another uh, pop-up webinar. Uh, don't be afraid to share any ideas you may have to, uh, that, that would help you. Uh, maybe we'll add them to the schedule. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thank you.